So speaking of forgetting, <laughs> I forgot. No, no one forgets that Jay's no longer full time on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No so to remind you of some customer service and all these things, my favorite things. Yes, mine as well. So this is going to be Q and A. Q&A. Lots of questions. Yeah. So the purpose of this is is for me to skew the market with my own judgment, pretend it's all factual. Actually, we get the same questions repeatedly, and so thought we might try using this platform to answer a lot of them. So you guys have, I wrote out, I don't know, we maybe have like 100 questions. Uh, some of the IG handles at the top there, and then uh, their questions. And so that everyone knows these are not direct quotes. Yep. So, yeah. So. All right. Let's get it cracking then. It, I'll go first. Anything else we got to do? I think that's it. That's it? Let's hey, just get, you good, yeah. Bubba? Let's just get to good. it. I'm good. Yeah, I'm All good. Right. I'm back. I'm good. I'm here. All right. I am... Kirk James wants to know, boombox pistol? Oh, very good question, Kurt. Wait, James. check me out. Check me out. That was very Kevin. No, it wasn't. It wasn't good. <laughs> um, so, so I don't know. I, uh, I, l- let's see what happens with braces. Let's see when we get this thing out. We're supposed to have the boombox out like Q4. We'll see. Testing's going good. But, I mean, initially we want to offer it in... Uh, I reserve the right to change my mind, but we want to offer it in the configuration which it's designed for, which means it'll have a stock and it'll be an SBR. And uh, once we fulfill that, then we will look at other options. But I can't imagine that a pistol won't be in the card somewhere, but who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is their handle, but Jacob asks 12 inch versus 16 inch 8.6. Good Sounds question. like an easy answer. Four inches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got. Um, well, Jake, when I had the dot dot dot, it means they have a ridiculously long. Oh, I got you. Yeah, IG yeah. handle, and I'm just not going to write it all out. So, Jacob, uh, w- w- was it eight versus twelve or twelve versus sixteen? <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> it just it was a- twelve inch versus sixteen inch. Uh, eight six. I, I you know, it, here's the thing. I mean, arm brace situations throwing a wrench in all this, but. We designed it around 12 inches, 16 inches. Here are the advantages. You can get it as a rifle with a stock on it. Um, and the only other advantage is you can shoot farther with supersonic. So if you want to shoot animals at 450 yards, for whatever, get the 16-inch barrel. I like the 12-inch barrel myself. But there are situations, whether it's state regulations or I don't want to deal with having to file a Form 1, but st- uh, maybe I get the 16 inch. They're both good. That's why I make both. I forgot what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that entertaining? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan sixty six. So Ryan um, wants to know: steel cans all bigger cherry bombs? Yeah. So no, that's not English. <laughs> okay, sorry. Steel cans all bigger cherry bombs. <laughs> Still not English, but you can answer. It's not English? What is it? Spanish? I don't know. I don't know what that is. All right. So, um, no, right? No. So, no. Some of the steel silencers will utilize the current cherry bombs. And some of the steel silencers, when appropriate, will use the larger cherry bombs for 8.6, 338. Or if it's a situation where you may need a long flash hider to hide all the flash. Um, so, it will be split. Wow, <laughs> uh, you got a you got a whiz banger over there. At Jay. the helpful live Q and A. Yes, yes. I'm doing, doing it right now. Way. Yeah, we're. Well, this isn't live. I think they mean a uh, live IG. Oh, uh, like let's do a YouTube. Let's, let's do a YouTube live Q and A. We okay. used to do that all the time for the mystery show. Let's just that's do one. True. Let's just do one. Let's do it. All yeah. right. We'll set it up. Good call. Yes. Good call, Ryan. No, that's not you, Ryan. Yeah, whoever. Whoever it was. All right. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Uh, Ferrari baby tire. <laughs> Best use Word. for 8.6 supers? Yeah. So 8.6 supersonic gives you more range, less drop, so your hit probability is better, less affected by wind, and you can kill giant polar bear mammoth-sized animals with it. So it makes, inside 300 meters, it makes 6.5, 
308, all these cartridges obsolete. You can have a gun half the size, weight, barrel length that is as effective. So uh, supers, uh, it's not like we did a subsonic cartridge and we did a super pretend. Like 8.6, like 300 Blackout is a compromise. Okay, but it fulfills a niche and supplies a capability that does not exist. It's 3x what a 300 blackout is. And the compromise is you get subsonic capability and you get supersonic and they are both badass. And it feeds from a 308 magazine and a lightweight compact gun. And the fast twist, we originally went down that road because of subsonic accuracy, but we find out with subs and super, it delivers more energy on target. And you see even the haters, even the wannabe companies are doing fast twist barrels now. Yeah, but some bullshit. One in 6.128374 I, I, I love that somebody sent me that, and it was like, oh, one in 6.25. And we calculated, and they, you know, I mean, it's a real estate agent and a uh, – and an IT guy that started this pretend gun company and that troll us and did this. And it's like, we did this cause we calculated and they like Googled some science terms and put on there. It's like, here's a, one of the downsides to one in three twist, a 90% of the barrel making machines in this country can only do a one down to one in six and a quarter twist. So whoever makes the barrels for these monkeys can only do a one in six and a quarter, right. one in six and a quarter is not optimum. It's just better than the one in 10 or whatever those bozos yeah. were using before. And it's available for manufacturers without having to pay for retooling. Yeah, retooling or R&D. That's the thing. All right, I want to say this. I'm going to go off on another tangent. You know why you want to buy Q and not the copycats? Because you want to invest in innovation. All right? It's easy for me to spend the money, our incredible actual engineering team, to spend all this time and resource to develop something. But you know why nobody does it? Because it's fucking hard and it's expensive. So all these, like these little companies like we're talking about, like we're the fucking shark. They're the little parasitic fish that swims around. Yeah. Candy really swim with your dick. <laughs> yeah. And they eat some scraps. All right. Yeah. So that's all they're doing. So basically, if you support the companies that wait for us to finish something and perfect it, and then they copy it, you're supporting the Chinese and wish.com. So think about that fucking love wish.com yeah you do because you're a cheap fuck some gems on there did um, i go or did you go you you go it's your turn. okay um at it says the brian but then it's also jacob so i'm not sure hornady 86 yeah hornady 86 hornady is going to be loading and producing and distributing 86 ammo and um yeah is so it, we there a time frame on that met with them at shot show no, I'm not going to say a time frame, but it it should be this year. That's a time frame. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. And I said should. Cool. That's fair. But, you know, I learned that at SHOT Show. Like, they asked me to come meet with them, and they told me. So, that's cool. Is that a good thing? Is that That's an awesome thing. Yeah, we want everybody to make it. Like, I don't like, – I'm not starting an ammo company, like – I, it's it's a capability that doesn't exist that should exist in the industry should embrace it and they will like they did with 300 blackout and it'll be even bigger and better and we want everybody to make ammo and guns and barrels just don't fuck it up love it uh mike mctats wants to know t on architect is I'm that architect. supposed to be eta no that's the t like that like what's the t man you don't tea. you old t yeah, yeah build the t it's, it's like the tea. gossip. What's the word? What's what? Yeah. Tea. All right. Well, what's okay. It's, you haven't heard. I anything? love. I no. love not being the oldest guy in the room. <laughs> T on. I thought it was. I thought you were just dyslexic and. and I'm mis- an architect. ETA. I am that, but and that's sometimes not. All right, what's the scuttlebutt on the architect? <laughs> scuttlebutt. <laughs> 1950s called and replaced a word. Yes. <laughs> um, so the T as a kid. What, let's chop it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's wrap. <laughs> yeah. So. The architect. So, um, you know, we're, we're going hard this year after the commercial silencer market and uh, with our steel silencer line. And we're doing things we've never done in the past, like modular mounts and things that I was kind of against, but it's a big part of the market now. Um, it's not necessarily what I want for me personally, for my guns, but popular silencers that people buy. And so we're taking those concepts and we're 
trying to make the best product. Well, we are going to make the best product and offer those. And so it's basically when Dead Air came out with the Nomad, which was a copy of the Trash Panda with interchangeable universal rear mounts and a front end cap. Um, we're doing a silencer like that and still that outperforms that, that you can put in whatever crazy mount you want or use the correct thing, a plan B and um, a cherry bomb. And you can put in a muzzle brake front end cap, a 30 caliber front end cap, a 556 front end cap. And it's called the architect because you can kind of, you know, assemble it how you want. You're going to do a wire cutter front end cap? <laughs> Who ain't? I was say, you got the, you've done it. Or, the old rebar cutter. Uh, I think this is a C, a PWC rider. Um, they ask tri lug. I've never the, heard that question. Th- see, I don't even like that because it was always called three lug till you kids came around. Uh, yes, the tri lug or three lug mount for the Erector 9 is in process now, and you probably see them by the time this post. Yeah, that's coming down quick. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah, did we, did we come up with a good name for that? No. Nope. Okay. No. Nope. So there you go. Um, we should. I agree. Yeah. Um, Smurf Perp wants to know deep dive into silencer tech. Oh, good lord! Fuck. Um, what is silencer tech? Technology. Why don't they read your book? (laughs) Yeah, my book will be coming out eventually. There you go. Um. God. Wait, I can do this. Another podcast. Wait, I can do this. I did this in Virginia Beach. I taught a bunch of children how silencers work. Here you go, deep dive. Gas comes out of the muzzle. Gets trapped inside the silencer. It swirls around, making it take a little longer to cool off or letting it cool off. Doesn't make a big boom at the at the ass end or the well, not the ass end, but the you mouth end of the gun. Fucking this up, friend. No, that's how it works, dude. It so goes in, it swirls around, it cools down, it doesn't fucking make a big nice. <laughs> they don't ignite the oxygen of the atmosphere. I took that question as like difference between silence or text oh yeah that's I, a, I don't know there, there's all question. there's all kinds of things like at aac where we probably sold more silencers than anyone to the military inch and a half diameter rifle silencers with an outer tube and traditional baffles now there's 3d printed all this kind of stuff i don't it, i always wrestle with this because i chase silencer sound for 15 years and just to find out that we could make the quiet of silencers when that was the objective, but it's really not the most important thing. So we use whatever technology, whether it be 3D printing baffles or cores or traditional style baffles, um, we come up with the performance specifications that we want for a product, for a particular product, and then we put whatever silencer tech into it. Like still, uh, there's a great comment or um, quote from Ethan about the most important like component of a silencer is air. And that's where we went, Ethan and I went to inch and three quarter tubeless to create twice the volume of the older technology inch and a half cans. Um you know, there's all kinds of things you can do, but you really got to decide what's the objective and the priority list. And so we try to do that for each product. And then we just put whatever technology into it that should be to achieve that, where it can be lightweight and affordable and usable. I want user experience to be great. Like using a sound meter is great. Having the lightest silencer is great. But it, in the end, it's put it on the gun and shoot it what's it intended for and how do you achieve that in that priority list? I think, I don't know. I so, think a, oh, I'm sorry. You can no, go. no, no. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think a cool thing that you could do potentially, and I know that people could just probably Google it, but no one really cares to do anything on their own. But if you were to find maybe the most recent solicitation from like a D, from the DOD on, uh, they needed a new can or even one that you did at AAC or whatever to show the people Hey, this is what the professional end users are actually looking for, as opposed to what you're being told you should be trying to find in a can or whatever. Like someone marketing, oh, you want the quietest can. Well, here's what people actually look for. Yeah, I think the current requirements are wrong, though. Um, and and I say that meaning, you know, with OSS and this flow through stuff, oh, yeah. that became very popular. But oh, because we don't want any toxic gas. I agree. You don't, but you're shooting a gun. You're going to get some of that. There's lead in the air. There's all sorts of things. 
you're going to get some of that. But when it's per a DOD requirement, they set out for that. And then they end up with something that's loud and heavy and flashes. Right. And, you know, if I got to imagine if you're in a gunfight, what you want is to not get shot. Right. And so you want something that doesn't have flash and hides the signature as much as possible where you can stay hidden and you can engage targets without being engaged. And if I got to take a little gas in the face as a result of that, it's way better than a bullet in the face. Yeah. So I, I think some of it, and especially with some recent testing we've done of these flow through products, they are fucking horrible for sound. Oh yeah. And we can get in it. We'll see if um, I think there's some more questions. You kind of, you kind of already answered this pretty much. Um, I'm skipping ahead of you, That's but okay. it goes, uh, Dolls in Space wants to know AAC versus Q sounds or tech. So in AAC, you were going after like a sound profile. And with Q, you are, you're going after multiple different um, characteristics. Yeah, the transition was at the end of AAC. Once we really started getting lots of government contracts and we started seeing guys, because, you know, during the war, 01 to 11 is when most of the stuff happened. And we learned a ton then on what guys really needed. It was reliability, accuracy. You know, sometimes it's point of impact shift. Sometimes flash w was very important. Sound, if they gave us a priority list of 10 items, sound was generally the 10th thing. Not always. We had a couple instances where sound was number one. And as a result, you get the Tyrant 9 silencer, which is probably still the Erector 9 and the Tyrant 9, which I did probably close to 15 years ago is still the quietest nine millimeter handgun silencer. And that's because we spent a year developing that and it was funded for a group that wanted the quietest nine millimeter pistol silencer in a certain size right. that could be made. Um, but I think, yeah, we, we, I covered it a minute ago. Um, we started learning what was important for reliability and real performance requirements and the cans have evolved. They've gotten lighter, easier to use, much larger diameter, more internal volume, and simple mounts, just usable stuff. And so we've taken those lessons, and whether it's for the military, government now, or for the commercial market, it's people want, I want to deliver stuff to the commercial market and the government military market that the guys will use and want to use. And not because I tell them they're getting less gas in the face or this or that. It's because it doesn't like, and you know, it, it, it enhances the performance. It gives you a capability you didn't have before without adding a lot of length and weight and bullshit. So I don't know if that's an answer, but works for me. Um, these boots, Asks Q cert handguard. Yeah, so I assume that's for the AR. Oh, yes. Like, where do you have those? That oh, you guys are. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys have seen pictures of the boom box, like it's on there, um, that's a little different because it has Q cert. The boom box is Q cert across the top too. Um, but yeah, Q cert handguard for honey badger and that will fit all ARs is coming soon. Um, Logan Chase wants to know why aren't handgun silencers more popular? They make the gun twice as long. Yep. So it's impractical in that sense. Stupid. I mean, I like them for certain applications. I like shooting with them, but I don't know. It's a novelty. Yeah, it, it is. And if you put, I mean, if if you got a Mark 18 or whatever AR, 416 with a 10-inch barrel, and you want a silencer and it makes the gun twice as long, like it's stupid, you're not going to use it. That's a handgun silencer. Yeah. Handgun guess, silencer, it needs to be integral into the gun. If you're like a... Um, like an animal control officer and you have to dispatch animals in like a rural neighborhood. It makes sense, but like there are practical applications. But yeah. I think it's a novelty. In I mean, I, I use them as well. I like shooting, but you know, it's like, I don't carry a handgun with a silencer right. on it. Cause I want the smallest, lightest thing possible. So that's about the only time when I go to the range that I put on my ear pro is when I want to practice with my carry piece. Uh, D underscore visuals. Uh, steel silencer lineup. Oh, geez. It's it's expensive. So we have um, basically a full line of silencers. Everything from a couple of 5.56 cans, and I say a couple because we're going to have one that's geared towards a specific military requirement, and then we're going to have one kind of based on that, but that I would want for me that I think is a more practical use for the commercial market. And we just learned a ton going out testing 
five, five, six silencers testing, like doing some final testing on, on our product. And it's interesting. What we found is the, the, the best for a mil spec sound performance is the M4 2000. Like it, well, it's, it's better. There's a reason they're still around. It's way better than the Huxworks or OSS than the CGS can than, um, the Surefire can, the latest Surefire can is actually pretty good. The original one was horrible on sound. Um, the Yankee Hill can super outperforms the CGS can and the Huxworks can. For a fraction of the cost. Yeah, and for sound and flash. And, um, you know, people wanting this flow through bullshit, you end up with a 20 ounce silencer that flashes, you know, like a. Uh, like a freaking lighthouse. We're talking about lighthouse. Look at that. <sighs> Threw it in there. And it is, is so loud. Both of those cans would hit the mid 150s, which is the sound of a nine millimeter handgun unsuppressed. Like, why would you put that on your That's gun? Insane. In no particular order. Oh, yeah. yeah. Blind Tiger, Speakeasy, Southpaw, 94 Madonna, The Architect, Pork Chop, Short Chop, Tall Boy, and. I was so impressed. That was really good, yeah. The, I, these are the names of the new silencer. It's my first up, time hearing this. 94 Madonna, I love. I love that one, too. So, Dennis Robin, we miss you. I think that's it. I think I need it. Why, why is it called the 94 Madonna? 94 Madonna, because it takes it all. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> all shapes and sizes. <laughs> 46 caliber. So it's the, the um, uh, what's the silencer killing called? The hybrid, the hybrid, that sort of forty-six caliber does everything. BS, mm -hmm. and so it's a it, that's that lineup is everything from three different eight six three thirty eight silencers to thirty caliber silencers to modular silencers to the forty-six caliber silencer. Um, back to five five six. Back to five five six. So it's it's a full product line. Travis Tweet wants to know boombox. Sup. <laughs> the boombox is. Um, it is a great product. So it, it's basically, if you have the honey badger, you got to get this. It's, it, it it obsoletes the honey badger in a sense. It is the next version, the big brother, at a slight, very slight increase in size and weight. It's a uh, eight inch gas gun. Looks like the honey badger shoots eight six super subsonic fast twist barrel one and three, um, and that's a government program. And we're going to sell the gun commercially as well. And right now, it should be Q4. And some parts of testing, I mean, this is a miracle, but, like, we're ahead. But we're getting better at that. We're not – we're getting better at all facets of our business. But the operation and – the operation side is, just, is the toughest part for us. So that means – production so that means purchasing that means manufacturing um and we're working hard on that now you know it's hard to grow as fast as we're growing to grow all parts of the company at the same time but i am very happy that as far as i'm concerned with my expectation of testing of this gun because it's a gas operated gun and a new caliber and a new design like all these things it's going really well which you would hope with engineers with a team that we've got with the experience that they have you know, there there should be a lot more lead off home runs than there would have been five years ago. So hopefully, hopefully we'll start shipping some into this year. Can't wait. Uh, Logan Fasher says mystery shirt. Wait, hold on, hold on, Jay. I need you to kind of pep it up a little bit, <laughs> Logan Fasher. I need you to I need you to like be here. All right, I'm here. All right. But you're a game show announcer. Hello. Give, me, give us some fucking energy. Have you ever heard of it? You buy it, you get prizes. The mystery shirt. Are you doing right, dial, another one? Dial it back. Touch. Logan asked if you're doing another mystery shirt. Are we doing another mystery shirt? Yeah. Yeah. This this is. You want me to pep up? <laughs> <laughs> we're just, we're yeah. doing the mystery shirt. Oh, God. Mystery shirt's awesome. It's, um, but you know, like everything else, it's like a lot of stuff we do. It's like not been done before and we don't really have a roadmap. And so we learn by trial and error and it's usually like a huge cluster fuck, but a great fun and a great success. And it's a way to engage with our customers. And I love doing it because it's a creative process. It is a, uh, what works in marketing, what doesn't. So 
it's a cool thing for us. Should we say like some of the aspects? Because last time we did three different tiers. We're not doing that this time, mm-hmm. but it's different than any other one in the past. And oh. so it's coming out pretty soon. And it's cool. I'm going to buy one. That's right. Does it look cool? I'll buy one. Yeah, it does. It does actually. Wait, wow, super cool. wait. If I buy one, am I eligible to win the prize? Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, because you don't even have health insurance anymore. <laughs> That's we'll, right. We'll draw your name and we'll be like, nah. Yeah, no shit. Uh, Mrs. We'll, Nick, we'll, we'll, wait, we'll run it by legal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thanks. <laughs> Mrs. Nick twenty one wants to know what kind of fucking savage sixty nine is from the top down. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Kate asking? That? Uh, hey, I, I do what the ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Nick twenty one wants to know. Uh, shoot five five six through Trash Panda and Thunder Chicken. Good call. Um, good question. Yes, absolutely, hundred <laughs> percent. It's so funny because in the testing we just did for five five six, I was just talking about <laughs> the number two can in our test was the Trash Panda on a thirteen inch five five six. It is quieter than ninety percent of the five five six silencers on the market, and it's a thirty caliber silencer, and it's roughly the size of a lot of the 556 five, cans it is wonderful on 556 five, the downside is titanium you're going to get some sparking on a little flash because of that and if you're shooting full auto which none of you are but you all want full auto rated cans titanium is not the best but you have the cherry bomb which is 174 and that's the blast chamber for it so you can shoot full auto through the trash panda and it's also quieter than almost anything else you're going to get for five five six. So yes, are you going to release any of that the and and thunder stuff, Chips are the are you going to release any of the um, testing that you guys did on those cans? Did you record it? Yeah, yeah, we we will at the end. I mean, yeah. we're like in the process. I just of meant it. so like when you like so people can see that. Hey, you'd- yeah, but you know, it's also the thing is if it's like people buy into this. Um, flow through technology and they buy the silencers and they put it on their gun. And even though they have to wear double ear pro to shoot it and it's heavy, they still think it's cool. Cause that's what the military want. Yeah. It's not actually what guys that really shoot a bunch of people want. It's just what some other people think the military should have because right. of this one reason. I have a question. Mm-hmm. We can edit this out. Yeah. If you say so. Okay. Um, is Q going to phase out titanium cans? Over time. I don't know. I mean, I think the market will decide that. Let's we'll we'll see if we can have a, a differentiator between the cans. Um, like, I like the titanium cans. I mean, the steel cans, like, we have prototypes and pre-production samples. Like, I haven't replaced all my silencers with steel cans. Like, the only steel cans I actually have right now are 8.6 ones. Not to say that I won't have them, but I feel absolutely no need to replace my jumbo shrimp or trash panda or thunder chicken um you know if the sales slow down then we'll then we'll stop it Hmm. oh the other thing with the testing we will release the testing but like i don't we've never posted db because number one guys like griffin or whoever lie about it we post a number and they'll say theirs is one db quiet or two db so you get into that and then it's like Anything that you post, if it doesn't support the emotions of the internet commando, right. then they just say that you're lying and you're faking the test or whatever. And it's like, I don't give a shit. We're not going to sell products that I wouldn't buy. And I have more experience in silencers than anyone in the industry. Anyone. And I've tested everything. I've shot everything. I have most every silencer there's ever been. Um, and we design stuff that's usable. And... We design stuff that's quiet, and we design stuff that doesn't prevent reliability with your gun, doesn't cause great point of impact shift and degrades accuracy. And, you know, I could put up all the testing in the world, and you're going to get the haters or the competitors that are saying that we're on. So it's like, you know, you buy Q because of the why, not because of the product or the spec, all right? And if you believe everything you read on Reddit, then you're a fucking idiot, and you're not our customer anyway. So I don't particularly care. And if anybody ever buys a product and they're dissatisfied with it, I mean, you guys have seen the way I handle that. Yeah. And I value our customers and I'm not going to deliver you something that I wouldn't buy. And if you're dissatisfied and it's legitimate, we're going to take care of you. And if, if you don't like it, then I'll buy it back from you. So there's that. Jake Kendall, 503. Uh, Noveski Lot Lizard, thoughts? 
I don't even know what the law lizard is. I love thoughts. I, I saw I love thoughts. <laughs> I saw it. Um, somebody sent it to me. It was maybe on the firearms blog or something. It's a <clears throat> it's a bolt action with a folding chassis, oh, but the okay. chassis folds, the grip folds, so it makes it a little smaller overall, yeah. and which was kind of cool. <clears throat> I think Nevesky is an awesome company. I like their products. Nothing turns me on about a seven hundred clone, no matter how nice it is, because it's just old technology um it's heavy it's cool that they're like it, getting back to their roots though, a little bit i, th- I, I think it for I, that aspect of things. i think it's cool i like the name it's cool i like nabeski their products are great quality i'm sure it's an awesome gun but you know we should have talked about this in the cameroon podcast we got off on all these tangents about inverted 69 <clears throat> But, you know, I had to hunt because Cameroon wouldn't let me take the fix. And right. I've only hunted with the fix for six or seven years now. And so I had to use a Winchester Model 70, Nick's gun, which I talked about on there. But one thing it did for Rad and I both, you know, it had traditional sling. You're carrying it that way. It's got a long barrel stock. doesn't fold. The gun's heavy. The gun served me great, and I was grateful. But I was miserable in the fact that I hunt with the fix and I know how that is. And it is so much better. You're not going to buy a fix because you like me. All right. And you're not going to not buy a fix because you hate me. So all that stuff is bullshit. You're going to buy a fix because of our team and the, the concept and the energy that we put into it and how it enhances the shooting and hunting experience. Yeah. And this, I am, in a way, I was so upset that I couldn't take the fix in the Cameroon. And now that it's happened and I had to hunt for two and a half weeks in, in horrific conditions with a traditional gun, it just reminded me and completely solidifies that the fix is the future of bolt action guns and a traditional gun sucks butt <laughs> compared to it. Yeah. So with all due respect to Novesky, I love their products. The gun looks cool. The name is cool. I love yeah. the concept of the grip folding. That is like, that's an innovative thing. I wouldn't take that in a hundred thousand dollars to replace my fix period. Right. Cause yeah. you don't get that short bolt throw. You don't get that lightweight. You don't get all the great things that, you know, that SR 25 detachable mag that's right. this long holds 10 rounds. You know, you can't change the caliber easy like you can on the fit. You just don't have the options. Um, all that 700 base stuff, the Winchester model 70, these great guns of the past, exactly what they are. Like nobody, um, are you familiar? Is it called icon out in LA that builds like, <clears throat> old awesome like I think broncos so. and stuff but yes yes like that stuff is cool or oh, you look in my driveway right there like i've got a uh, 91 land cruiser from japan a right hand drive that thing is sick i love it i wouldn't take that in a million dollars to replace my f-150 as a daily driver and i love that truck and to me it's the same thing with any remington 700 base gun or traditional bolt right. gun compared to the fix it's cool it's nostalgic you can do cool shit but it is bullshit compared to what's available to well me. Uh, like you're not the you're not the customer for that gun for sure and they're all obviously going to be customers for that gun guys that aren't doing the things that you're doing jose ornate wow. <laughs> um sorry um yeah, I mean, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. I think you're just you're not the customer for that gun, and it's probably marketed to another consumer, like someone that's just going to take it to the range and it's cool and they like it and like maybe they'll hunt with it. I don't, I don't know, know that I agree with you. I think I am the customer for that gun because it's going to be a six eight thousand dollar gun. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's oh, going to yeah, be expensive as hell. Yeah, and it looks cool as shit, and I like it. The only reason I'm not going to buy one is because I've been exposed to the fix. Right. Like nobody likes taking a step back. Like I'm not going from the Tesla or, you know, my new F-150 to uh 1992 Chevy. Like it just ain't, it just ain't a thing. No, nah, I, I, I'm not driving Illumina. Like, and that's the way I feel. All right. Colton Gray asks max range of eight, six, seven max range. Like, Colton, I love you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Max range, though, it doesn't really mean anything. You had to like, kill something? Like, 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 we got on video of me shooting 
two getting two hits in a row on a one mil target at thousand yards with a twelve inch subsonic eight six. Wow, really? So what's the max range? Like if I if I were you there in Wyoming? Yeah, nobody was up except me and Chad. That's right. We weren't uh, there. I wasn't there, no. That's they were subsonic? Yeah, that's sub. That wasn't super. Jesus. All right. Um Max range. Was it super? It might have had to be super. No, I think it was sub. Wow. 160 feet of drop. Um, Been so long now, I don't remember. So, like, max range, it's like, what does that mean? Like, people throw these terms out, and it's kind of generic. Like, when we deal with the military, if they say a a max range, or when I deal with my engineers, I say max range, they just laugh at me. Because if I shoot the bullet, like, at a 45, you know, the gun, a 45 degree, like, I don't know, it's going to go, like, five miles. (laughs) And like, especially a subsonic, if it hits something at the end, it's only losing like a hundred feet a second velocity. It's going to kill whatever it hits just as good. If I shot it at five yards, that's just not practical. So max range, like what I'll do with the gun and what most people are going to do, because I test it and do all the stuff is different. What we did it for is subsonic with eight, six is a 300 meter. It's for 300 meters. So you can kill stuff, hit a small target, one MOA, Two MOA target at 300 and supersonic. I've shot animals to 450 with it. That's not max range, but that's like practical for killing. We, we've shot animals together with subsonic at over 200 meters, big animals, and with supersonic past 400. So, I, like, I think 86, what people need to understand is it is a 99% solution. It is not the Silencer Co. hybrid. It is 99.9% of the shit you do, if you're honest, is inside 300 meters. And this is the lightest, most compact, most effective gun that you can have in a bolt or a gas gun. And it's that's what it's for. That's the thing to do with it. And I don't know. Like, I could go out, if, if our goal on the next Africa trip is for me to kill an animal at 700 meters with subsonic 8.6, we will get it done. This is not practical. And so would I say the max range is that I could shoot an animal at a thousand with supersonic. We'll get it done. It'll be painful, but we'll get it done. But then I, would I do that to like bullshit you with marketing and say it's a thousand meter max? No, like I'm not going to do that stupid. So sorry. Went off on a tangent there. It's like, it's like the words mean something. We got T-Church. T-Church. T-Church 426. When mega fix. Dude, I feel you. (laughs) All right, so the boom box threw a monkey wrench in there, but it also was helpful because it gave me time to consider a couple things. So Rad, our beloved PH, renamed the Megafix the proper fix. Kind of a South African sort of proper British kind of term they use all the fucking time. So I couldn't argue with it. It's a good name for yeah, the African gun. Agreed. But what we decided, so we've talked about this. Uh, originally, the Megafix is going to be a 300 win mag, use AI magazine, 16 inch gun. That's what it was. And it is like the ultimate lightweight planes game in Africa hunting rifle, the one rifle you could do everything in the world with. It makes a lot of sense. But then we're like, well, I want to put 375 in it so I can hunt big African dangerous game with. But it's like, well, 375 don't really fit in the magazine that well, almost, but not really. And so engineering said, if you want a gun with African cartridges, let us do a mag. A mag is the hardest part of the gun. And then it's oftentimes the most expensive. And so I said, yes. But what that does is that adds two years to this process. And so they were working on that. Um, a multi-caliber magazine where we could do like 17 different calibers, not including African stuff, but 300 PRC. That's the right name. Yeah. Yeah. And all these other cartridges. Well, so the boom box delays this eight, six delays it because it gained traction with the government military. Um, I go to Africa a couple of times and then what I realize is, okay, so what are the difficult things with the proper fix? Well, they figure most things out. The magazine's a difficult thing. And then, the mag or the barrel extension and the bolt are different and complex and use some special materials. So these are two different things we have to test. Those are the two unknowns with the gun. The fixed system itself, we got it, works fine. Doing a mag. Whew. So when I was over... How an hard al- could it be? How, how hard is it to write and produce an album? <laughs> 
So it depends. <laughs> there you go, my man. <laughs> <laughs> you you want a great one or you just want yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and, and if we do it, uh, again, Q, the why for Q is we don't do things that haven't been done that are innovative and not without reason. It enhances your experience. And that shit ain't easy to do. It's easy to be a Daniel defense. It's easy to build an AR-15. All right, doing new stuff, that's not easy. Magazines is also the heart of a gun. I, okay, so anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to have the, we're now going to have the mini fix. We're going to have the fix. We're going to have the mega fix and the proper fix. What is the mega fix now? It's going back to the roots. Oh. It is a 300 win mag, uses Magpul or AI, Magpul AI pattern mags or AI mags. It's 300 win mag, 16 inch, change, you can change the barrel on anything that would fit into the 301 mag, AI mag, we're going to do. Because what that is, is now all they have to do is half. They have to do the extension and the bolt. Right. And then when and it comes to the proper bit. fix, that'll already be done. They only have to do the magazine. There we go. So that, that, that that's how that's how it ended up working out. And that's the reason why. And that's, that's a long explanation. But being transparent, that's kind of where we are. Uh, Jay Sweat. What up? Wants to know, customer build, dollar sign? Money? Cash? Yeah, customer builds. I don't know if they're shut down right now. Oh, we're going to open them back up because we just moved yeah, we creative moved. to the new building. Yeah, um, but I, I don't know. I think customer builds might be like $500 upcharge. And I don't even like doing that, but it's like otherwise we would have 4,000 customer builds a year and we couldn't do business. Yeah. And so we charge, <clears throat> we charge some amount of money. But now I think in the new place too, you're going to get like a – like I'm not trying to make money off the customer builds. I'm trying to limit the number of people to come and do it. That's those being transparent. That's what it is. So I think part of the five hundred dollars now. Hopefully you're going to get like a little gift basket of things that you can't buy, and it's just for customer builds. So that's kind of a cool thing. Me personally, I would come do a customer build on the fix just to do it with the engineers and learn the gun. Yeah, like I would pay double the price of the gun to come do that. That is a Fucking cool experience. Yep. Yep. And if they like you, you'll probably miss your flight, <laughs> which is a real, that happened. Yeah. More dude, than once. Uh, yeah. Multiple dudes have missed their flight because the engineers liked them too much. <sighs> Good times. Uh, Roland R76. I recognize that name from somewhere. Uh, this is paraphrasing. The fuck Q going to do because brace rule? Question mark. Comply. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to go to prison. Uh, we're not going to lose our FFL. Yeah. Um, you know, what we're going to do is continue to sell pistols in whatever configuration that the ATF allows and that you guys want to build. And we'll sell stocks separately once people, you know, you get the gun, you want to do your form. Is it a form one or two? Form one to make your own. Okay, for a civilian. Yeah. Okay, so a form one, then you can put a stock on it. What's wrong? Running out of juice here. How much time we got? 12 minutes. Uh, all right, we'll get it. So, uh, yeah. So, hopefully, um, you know, SB Tactical and the industry will be successful uh, against a lawsuit with ATF, and we will get this decision, you know, thrown in the garbage, and we'll be able to produce pistols with arm braces. But until then, if the ATF tells me I can't have a license if I ship guns with arm braces because they're illegal SBRs and I could face criminal prosecution, we will not be doing that. All right, rapid fire, just me. Ready? Mm. Straight pull. Straight pull. Yeah, straight pull is cool. I, I didn't. I originally wanted the fix to be straight pull, um, but I didn't think America was ready for it. And it has some engineering like complications, as you see, some of the some of the wannabes pretending to do a straight pull can't figure it out, and there's a reason why. We could do it, but it's a huge endeavor, and I can shoot the 45 degree bolt throw on the fix so fast; and it's so sort of can, irrelevant. So to can me. Ian from Forgotten Weapons. You see that my man can shoot, and he's all left handed doing it all like a jalopy. That's that why I'm like crazy. anyone that complains about being a lefty and like, a lefty fix, like, dude, go watch that clip. Ian is. The more I get to know him, he's a fucking legend. Yeah, he, he is, is a stud. Like he Ian, McC he so forgotten weapon. Shout out to Ian. I love him. Thought process on OG oh, Honey Badger. Shit, don't do this to us. Y you guys the, tell me. You the guys OG Honey Badger was <laughs> yeah, designed to replace the US or the the MP5 SD for US SOCOM. For US SOCOM, mm -hmm. 
gives you a lightweight uh, package with 300 blackout yeah. uh, capabilities. Yeah. So you get a rifle capability yeah, right, yeah, of yeah, a yeah. gun that's half the half, weight half. of an MP5. Yeah, 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 More yeah, lethality, yeah. less. Better accuracy. Better accuracy. And also kind of it looks cooler. It looks cooler. Woo. Yeah. Sex sales. Lefty 556 silencer. So that would be the Southpaw. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll have a lefty, and it, it, it's actually specific for a military contract. And it is it is awesome for the requirements that they wrote. But, you know, it, it uses some of the flow-through technology. And it's it's not – I don't like it as much as I do the Southpaw. And so I didn't want to – I don't want to sell the lefty really on the commercial market because I think for people, if you want the military, I don't, I don't want to sound like somebody doesn't want to sell military products. We're going to sell it commercially. So once the government contracts fulfilled, we'll be a, we'll sell the product commercially. But the thing is, it's not as good of a practical user experience as the Southpaw. So we made the changes to make it better. And, and that means sound. That means, um, Weight, size, like there's things like you aren't shooting belt fed five, five, six full auto. So I don't want to hear like get the thing that's best for what you're really doing. Like, don't don't lie. If you want to like dress up and what's it called? LARPing? LARP. Yeah. Th- <laughs> then get the airsoft stuff. Yeah. Uh, bolt carrier group. Bolt carrier group. Yep. So that's um, are those shipping and guns now? Well, it's a we? part and a gun. Yeah. And- so so we did it for several reasons and they're coming out. Um, it's a modular bolt carrier group that we can use for every gun that we make. And you can change out the back end to add anti-bolt bounce um, to suit different weights for different calibers, different pressures, different gas. It's just a, a modular thing. And then we, we did it as well because most of the mil spec carriers you get now, there's so many that are bullshit if you're buying them from vendors that are not mil spec and they're trash and we reject half of them and they suck. And you know, and the carrier, like if Stoner were doing it now, he wouldn't use the materials and the processes and the coatings that he was using then. So the right. thing is like, whatever, 70 years old, he would, do, he would do what we're doing. And so our carrier, it costs me three times as much to make ours than it does to buy a mil spec carrier, but they're dog shit for the most part. You can get some good ones, but there's like, used to be only two companies that made them back when I was a kid in this industry. And now there's like 30 and there's only two that are worth the shit. And by the time we get them and we do all the QC and we reject them, do all the things, it's like, I might as well make one that's three times more expensive and twice as good. And that's what we're doing. And so they'll be in the guns, all the guns, as soon as we have production volumes and they're not going to other contracts uh, or guns on contract, and they'll be available separately to, to purchase. And you can decide for yourself if it's, you know, enough of improvement for you to do that or not. Where is Jay? <laughs> from right here dude. it's right here and it went, wasn't actually jay that asked the question. no i didn't ask that but i'm here i'm around i went to your hood no one knew who you were <laughs> i know yeah so uh, i don't know we talked about it in the in the cameroon yeah go the watch Cameroon's the other podcast, podcast. Yeah, go watch the other one yeah, yeah yeah jay is uh jay's a nomad he, yeah. he wanders the he wanders the earth the babies are rolling stones taking pictures and looking for uh new new plant species that's right uh, Barrett sell. Yeah, he sold it to me. That's where I've been. <laughs> yeah, That's where he's been. <laughs> they announced it at Shot Show, and uh, yeah, they sold. They sold to an Australian company, and no, I ain't mad about that. And don't don't be a jackass about it. Like people, because I saw some people like online giving a shit because Australia don't like a, like. Okay, they have a big defense program. It's a defense company, and you know, Chris and his dad. It's the fucking American dream, and I don't want anybody pissing on that. Like they're the only father son to have each designed to guns separately that are very different designs that are currently adopted and used and under contract with the U S military. They've done so much as a family to support our soldiers and our military. And it's a fucking American dream. They were living. If you watch the Chris Barrett podcast, which is probably the best podcast in the world, like other he, than this, one. he grew up with, he was raised, he and his sister raised by their dad and they lived in their granddad over the garage in a little apartment and Ronnie Barrett used to take pictures for restaurants for their menus and develop the 50 cal and then built it and then built it into a yeah because he could built it into a company 
and is had that gun under contract for what 30 years or yeah, some easily. shit and they've Boy. built an awesome company and you know ronnie's getting older and chris a grown-ass man and it's you know they built a big company worth a shitload of money, and they sold it, and I couldn't be happier for him. Chris I can't is, wait to see what he does in the future. Chris has got expensive hats he's got to pay for. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Every, now, he's, now he can have any hat he yeah, ever wants. And it, all his taste is expensive, <laughs> yeah. but shout out. Chris uh, is awesome. Decibel for pork chop? Seven. <laughs> it's a number seven out of nine. Uh, so, yes. Uh, it's, it's such a loaded question. It is incredibly fucking quiet. All right, subsonic with the pork chop, um, with uh, well, it probably didn't even matter the barrel length, but we've recorded down to 120 dB a mil standard, which is quieter than most 22 silencers, Bam. and it's shooting a big old 300 and something grain bullet, so it's tits. How do Supersonic, we supersonic? It's great too. Sorry. How do we find legit Q dealers? Uh, we have a dealer locator on our website. Go there, and if you are having trouble with that. Uh, email info at livecure.com and he will put you through to our sales team and they will hook you up with the closest dealer to you yeah, deal all that. over the United States. Deal that, brother. Wait, what was the other thing? You're going to start doing, we're going to have some videos on YouTube about dealer. Yeah. What's the thing we're going to do? With yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's kind of what this, this is going to oh, be. Sorry, so, um, I'm running out of time. Um, Spit it. YouTube content other than podcasts? Yeah. Go to the go to the page, and you'll you'll see that there's all kinds of stuff. We have YQs, how cues. We have we have hunts. We have events. We have all kinds of things. We got new content coming out. Uh, a lot of different types of things. Uh, more hunting, more podcasts. Um, we're gonna do this new cool thing uh, where we do dealer spotlights, where we go all over the country and we do uh, really cool content with specific dealers to um, kind of get their name out there um, in a more public space and. Texas Depot in September, October, or something. Yep, and so also Sportsman's Finest in Austin, Texas. Um, I like Texas. And like, whether you're a big dealer, small dealer, um, if you are interested in this, hit us up. Let's make a deal. But yes, Ooh, let's make a deal. Uh, lots of uh, lots of content on there already and coming soon. Our channel is very good compared to every other gun company. Three uh, D printed silencers in the future. The future, yeah. I mean, three D printed thing has its place people printing tubes is stupid uh, yeah it's got a place but it's not the end all uh q to build something in five seven gross hell no and 3d printing will actually probably in the future replace traditional machining by the way um uh building 300 blackout versus eight six blackout bolt gun versus buying it uh, if you're talking about like a Rimmage or Savage or Remington, like I don't really give a shit. It's probably all the same, but all those are dumb compared to the fix. Like save the money, buy the fix, buy once, cry once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, talk shit about manufacture about silencer manufacturers. You guys suck. Is that what that says? MFGs. Yeah, I mean the latest thing is the testing we did in five five six and CGS with their Helios, and I saw they actually went on. Somebody sent me went on their own page and said that we tested a three hundred eight silencer on five five six. No, their flow through silencer is the worst fucking thing I've ever seen. It's like fifteen hundred bucks or whatever. It was one hundred and fifty five dB and had a fireball coming out. It was so loud. Ethan and I didn't have on air protection. We we're ten feet behind the shooter and we backed up another ten feet and it was still out. It's horrible. There's a bunch of bullshit with this marketing and flow through is kind of a joke. Um, biggest douche in the industry, and why is it Marty Daniel? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marty Daniel, because he's a fucking punk ass liar, and he, yeah, he sets up and sues employees. 2023, 2024 product roadmap. What's coming down the line? What, what are you doing over here, Q? All right, we got the boom box. That's the eight six gas gun. Looks like the honey badger. All right, we got that coming out. We got all kinds of accessories. We have the Q cert handguard. All right, we got the mega fix. All right, working on the proper fix. Probably won't be out by then, but we're going to be knee deep in it. We're going to have not just the boom box because. Can everybody afford the honey badger or the boombox? Probably not. So we're trying to support the people. Company of the people. So what we're going to try to do, we're going to have a sugar weasel version of, we'll come up with another name, of the 8.6 gas gun of the boombox. So Turntable. And what? Turntable. And a microphone. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two two turntables and a microphone. You know that song? Yeah, so my best at? friend's sister growing up when that song came out, said it thought it said two ton monkeys and a microphone. Well, you're from the South, so. It yeah. ain't even close. Well, they're from the south. Yeah. Um, Two sun monkeys in a microphone. <laughs> so we Very also tight. have a full line of steel silencers this year. Um, 
the bipod came out. The trigger. I don't. What else we got going? There's a lot of stuff. Well, you talked um, about mega fix. You talked about proper fix eventually. Steel canes. Steel canes. Sugar weasel eight yeah. six. Sugar yeah. weasel. I mean, I, I think a lot of it is still mystery shirt. like yeah, mystery shirt. Like I, I obviously love the marketing and the in the innovation, um, but a lot of the focus for the company is we need to grow the operations and and the factory aspect of the company. Um, so a lot of new things will involve that and it doesn't seem as sexy, but what it's going to do is, is better support our, our beloved customers, dealers, distributors. And, and, and that's a goal for the company and that's, it's necessary for us to really grow to the next level, which for me, that's great. Like, do I care if everybody owns one of our guns? Not really. However, it is wonderful because it supports that money supports the innovation, which is what I love. And I think is the real benefit that we provide to the consumer that wants, you know, good gun products or whatever. And it, it takes that money from production to do it. And that's why I want to grow that part. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you going to do skate decks or what's up? We have one coming out uh, Who is in a couple of weeks. Who is talking? Right here? That's Thomas. His camera is out. <laughs> Um, yeah, we get skate decks. So hopefully we're going to do way more of that kind of stuff. Like the lifestyle stuff has been great for us. Like, can you believe like the popularity of the sling? I know. Like so, that West Coast sling will well, sell now it's the video double. That we did. Yeah. yeah, totally, totally your video. You did the sling devils. You didn't do the sling. Ooh, oh ooh, yeah, that's burr. right. <laughs> know your role. That's oh. right. <laughs> um, but like that West Coast sling will sell for double retail online. Yeah. Like that's that's. I mean, I don't and know, we got ridiculous. and we got so many more G slings coming out. Um, I can't see me right now, but we got like we got all the kinds of new colorways. You know, we got. Uh, you'll see. Yeah, I was is gonna, that, I was you, gonna name them. Can all. you answer if that deck is a shape deck or is it a popsicle? Do you know? It's a popsicle. Which boring. I, I know. I have to Who skates popsicles it. anymore? I don't kids. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I don't. supply chain. That's true. Yeah, because that all was still COVID was going on. It was hard. Yeah, so I want to do continue the skate decks when it makes sense. And we have a whole like series. You look on the team. wall over here. I don't probably, well, you can't see it now because Thomas Camry out broke it anyway. But, it, you know, uh, wait, who, who? Hey, you know what? Those are Enjoy, right? Yeah, they folded. Do you hear that? Like uh -uh. two days ago, Louis, uh -uh. Louis left. Yeah, half the team left in November and Louis made a post. Louis Barletta made a post like two days ago that. He's done, and it looks like Enjoy is going to fold. Their Instagram is gone. Everything looks like they're going to fold. Sad. I hope it's just a big marketing scam. That would be kind of tight. But um, These yeah. might be worth a lot of money soon. Yeah, hold on to those. Q hold, skate team. He holds on to everything anyway. Right. I know. I need to sell. I, I tried to, if you I, want these skateboards, call me. I tried buy. to convince Kevin last night on our date to burn it all, to everything. <laughs> hey, you got insurance? Burn it all and just fucking move on. Will you do a Q skate team? Can I be a filmer for your skate team? I got a fish eye. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't I don't I, I don't I I don't know how much of that part of my life's behind me. Like I I, 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 I mean, you, you know, I think it, your TM, dude. it's kinda like once you're a crip, you're always a crip. Like once you're a skater, you're always a skater. Like I, I just don't I'll be your TM, dude. I'll drive the the I, van. I don't know. Like right now, like my passions are it's it's still like my job. Like I love small arms innovation so much, and then passion is, is my side chick now. Skating is like that. That's the twice a year weekend woman. Damn. So so I mean I lost it a little bit. I mean you know the culture. It's just like me growing up in the South with pro wrestling during that time period. It, it's like that's always going to be part of who I am. And so is skating, but I just don't, you know, and too, it, it's a weird thing. Like my son is old now and yeah, like, he so don't, old. he don't like hanging out with, with his dad. And like I don't skate with him as much anymore. And I don't, it's just not his thing. He's, he's also not telling you that it's, it's his knees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. I can still shred that up, man. Yeah, I can still, I, I believe you. I, believe. I, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, and I don't like, I don't like the potential of getting hurt now because now it's like recovery's longer, and like I'm in Africa half the time, right. so like I break my leg, like I don't go to Africa for six months, that's true. and that that and like, then he's in a bad mood. That's, yeah, that's bad heartbreaking. Yeah. So I don't know. No Q skate team. Sorry. I mean, I won't say never, but 
uh, like I wouldn't put much effort into it right now. So I don't, you know, we like to whole ass everything. We don't want to half ass nothing. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like the whole ass. The whole I ass. Do like a whole ass. Whole but, ass. Not, but not backwards. Inverted's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. all right, boys. Well, right. Jay, it is so good to see you, bro. Yeah. It's glad to see all you guys. I'm happy to be back. Um, you can't see me, but make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to see JP come and do more podcasts and content, leave it in the comments. And yeah, give me a call. We'll come have, back. Make it happen. All right. Smash cut to title card.